How to narrate audio using PowerPoint on macOS is part of a series of tutorials found on the CEL Open Resource Repository. In this brief tutorial, we will cover the basics of narrating PowerPoint presentations. Tools we will explore in this session include PowerPoint for macOS, and the version I am using is part of the Office 365 distribution. In this session, we will explore audio recording within the PowerPoint application using a practical example that I will add to a course page in Learn. Some quick recording tips. The environment that you choose to do your recording is quite important in terms of reducing or eliminating any background noise that could be distracting. Choose a room that is carpeted or has a large rug in it, and if you don't have that, throw down some pillows or some comforters on those hardwood floors. This will help to eliminate any background echo that may be coming from the room. Choose a time of the day where you can eliminate as much background noise as possible. Pets, other people in the home, if it's a more active time of the day, they could be caught up by your recording. Also, try to turn off all ceiling fans, air conditioning units, and close the windows as well. Make sure your cell phones and tablets are turned off. Try to remove them from the room if at all possible. And of course, the software that you're going to need is PowerPoint for Mac OS. And in terms of accessories, we do recommend that you try to use an external microphone. And this may be something that is just equipped with a headset that came with your cell phone. So before you begin your audio recording, try to make sure that your presentation slides are complete. This will help to avoid having to go back and readjust any of your audio recording as you complete your presentation later on. And we do recommend that you use a script that you copy into the notes section of your PowerPoint presentation. Doing so improves accessibility because you are creating a text alternative of your audio as you go. And it also helps to minimize some of the mistakes that you may make as you're recording your slides. We're going to demonstrate really quickly some settings that you should prepare in advance of doing all of your recording. So this can be done from the Transitions tab. When you click on the Transitions tab, which is up at the very, very top, it'll bring up this transition ribbon. And the region that you need to be focused on is in your top right corner. So what we're going to want to make sure is on, mouse click is unchecked. And after, we're going to insert two seconds and then select Apply to All. And now that's done, we're ready to go ahead and start recording. So when you begin recording, there are a couple of things that you're going to need to be aware of. In PowerPoint for Mac OS, recording begins immediately as soon as you click on record slideshow. So you're going to want to pause that as soon as you get started and restart your audio recording. When you're finished recording, select End Show and then make sure that you click on Yes in the dialog box to save all of the narration that you have just recorded. We're going to select Record Slideshow. And notice how the timer immediately starts to, to go. So we're just going to go ahead and pause that and click Rewind. And when we're ready to get started, we're going to be selecting this little triangle button, which represents Record. So before we go ahead and start, I wanted to draw your attention to my slide notes. So this is what I will be using as my script. So now that I'm ready to go ahead and start, I'm going to use my script and I'm going to start recording. Remember to leave a little bit of a pause at the beginning at the end of your recording so it doesn't accidentally get cut off at either the start or the finish. So here we go. I have captured a 3D representation of the Caracol structure and the Chichen Itza site found on Google Poly. Let's explore the interior and exterior features of this section. Inside the structure we can see this, and this, and this, and outside the structure we can see this, and this, and this. Okay, so you'll notice that I left a nice pause at the beginning and at the end. So, and my current slide time is 36 seconds. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and end show. And when we end show, it brings up this dialog box that's asking if you want to save the time for your slideshow at 36 seconds. Do you want to save this new slide timing? Yes, we do. So click yes, and there we are. To prepare your narrated PowerPoint slides for playback, 
Once you have finished recording, each narrated slide is now going to contain a speaker icon. Review each slide of your presentation, select the speaker icon, and from the playback tab that appears along the top when the speaker is selected, select Start and Automatically. You will need to repeat this for each slide of your presentation. So looking at our new slide, our audio icon appears in the bottom right hand corner and if visibility is an issue you can move the icon anywhere on the page that you want. So I'm just going to move it up here so we can see it a little bit better. Notice that when I click on the icon I have these two additional menu items that show up and when I deselect that they disappear. We're going to click on that again and we're going to select the playback menu item and we're going to ensure that we have selected here starts automatically and that the player icon hides during the show. We do not need it to rewind, play across slides. And what this is going to do is it's going to enable your narration to play automatically when each slide opens. The other thing you're going to want to do is review that the audio is playing back the way that you expect it to. So if we hit play, I have captured a 3D representation of... Excellent. If you are unhappy with your recording, you can go back into the slideshow menu item and by clicking on this little drop down next to record slideshow, you select clear, clear narration on current slide and repeat the recording for your slide all over again. Before you upload your presentation, you should test your slideshow. So from the slideshow tab, click play from start. Once you're satisfied with your presentation, save your file as a PowerPoint presentation, otherwise known as a PPTX file. Now that we want to review our slideshow, we're going to select our slideshow menu item, and then we're going to click Play from Start. I have captured a 3D representation of the Caracol structure on the Chichen Itza site found on Google Poly. Let's explore the interior and exterior features of this structure. Inside the structure, we can see this and this, and outside the structure, we can see this and this and this. My slideshow has played back successfully, and now we're ready to go ahead and save this project and get it uploaded to learn. So to do that, we're going to select the folder where we want to save our presentation. And I have this saved as Screen Capture Demo Chichen Itza. And it's saving as a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to save that. Now, you may want to save this out as a video format. If you do choose to do that, do also include the PowerPoint file for accessibility because MP4 format does not retain all of the text information which is included in your notes and is on the slides themselves and that you will want to retain for accessibility purposes. So if you do want to save this also as a movie presentation file format, you select export and then you select MP4 format. So we'll go ahead and save that one now as well. You can change the quality settings of your movie here. We do recommend that you select either low quality or internet quality in order to be able to minimize the size of your file. I'm going to go ahead and select low quality so that you can see what that looks like. And I'm going to export. And now we're done. Now you're ready to upload your presentation to learn. And we're going to demonstrate how to do that real quick right now. Today I have created two additional files. I have my MP4 file, which is 20 megabytes in size. We do recommend that all of your file sizes are no more than 500 megabytes in size. And in terms of the duration or the length in playback, try to keep it under five minutes or around the five minute mark. To upload your materials into Learn, first you're gonna to want to select Course Admin and then Manage Files and that will pull up a directory tree that looks a lot like this. And in my case, I organize all of my different file types and folders, and most of my media I keep together within a media folder from including audio, documents, images, video, and more. So we have two different types of files we want to upload today. One of them is a video, so that was our 
MP4 video up here, the demo Chichen Itza. So I'm going to upload and I can just drag and drop that over here. And when it's done, we're going to go ahead and just save and I'm going to overwrite this file here. And the next one I'm going to want to upload is my PowerPoint file. So again, we select upload and I'm going to select my PowerPoint file over here and we're going to drag and drop that. All right, so now that's done and we're going to save. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is we're actually going to bring it into our course. We're going to either add that to our table of contents directly if that works for you. In my case, I have organized all of my materials in different folders in the table of contents and I've created a test page over here for my PowerPoint presentation that I want to put it on. And I've actually got links to both of these different versions. We've just created a couple of new files though and I'm going to want to replace these previous versions. So to do that, I will edit HTML and then I'm going to first select our PowerPoint and I'm going to delete that. And to add it, I insert a quick link and I navigate to the correct course file. We added it to our media folder and our documents folder. And there's my demo Chichen Itza. This is the most recent one. So I am going to go ahead and click on the pencil icon. I'm going to go Chichen Itza to give it a new name, but I want to make sure that this opens up in the same frame and I will demonstrate why that is in just a few moments when we save the HTML page. So I'll insert that link. I have also declared that this is a PowerPoint file. Another way that you can do that is you can just put in the, uh, the file descriptor there and we're also telling them that it is just under two minutes. My newest video is now actually only 39 seconds in length so I'm going to go ahead and change that to one minute or you can put the correct timestamp in properly so that would be 0 0.00.39 seconds. So the second one we know that it is also the same amount of time so I'm going to use exactly the same format that I did above and we're going to put that there. Uh, this is an, a video but we're going to call it an mp4 to follow the same format that we used above. And now we're going to want to replace this link with the newly published mp4 that we just created. We are going to insert another quick link, select course file, media, and then we're going to select video right here in video. We just created this one. So the demo Chichen Itza MP4. I'm going to select the pencil icon and this time I want to make sure that it is opening in a new window. And the reason for that is I want to be able to use the full screen resolution of the browser that my students will be looking at this file. So now I'm just going to go ahead and save and close that. And now I'm going to demonstrate the two very different behaviors between those two link types. So PowerPoint file is not a native web format. So when I click on this link, it's going to invoke the download command. So it downloads my PowerPoint file to my downloads folder. My video, however, is a native web format, so when I click on this, it's going to open up a player window and it is going to utilize the maximum area of the screen that we set this up for. Now, I have a 5K display here, so it looks a little small, but if I had a standard laptop screen or even a mobile device, this would be utilizing the full screen resolution. Thank you for taking a few minutes to review this presentation and we do hope it has been helpful. Any questions that you may have about this presentation or about building your course materials, reach out to us directly at remote teaching at uwaterloo.ca.